Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, welcome to Pivoting to Web3. And I have an exciting guest today that's in a different path than what we've been before. More in that cybersecurity, AI. And this is the first time I'm getting into the cybersecurity and his timing could be more perfect. His name is Nick Lorenzio. And yes. Nick is definitely on point. He knows what's going on and what's happening. So Nick, Tell us how you got in the space, your past, and what brought you into AI with cybersecurity. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And hi, everybody. Um, so really, uh, it's actually, it starts in the family. Um, my dad was part of the dot-com boom uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s. He worked for Alta Vista and Yahoo.com, if those ring a bell. Wow. Um, so it it runs in the family, and I, I heard those conversations as a kid. So, you know, I've seen it all, you know, from the days of Nintendo, that being my first gadget, right, um, to AOL, everything. Um, and hearing those conversations at the dinner table my entire life um, prepared me really well uh, for Web3 because I've seen all these transitions. Um, I've gone through the journey. Um, you know, I, I really, I feel like today in Web3, it's kind of like the Wild West. It's like everyone's trying to build something new and create something. And it's, it's really amazing um, because I do think innovation slowed down for, for a number of years in recent years. So with that said, you kind of grew up with it. And in fact, you did grow up with it. And you're in the AI space. And what is it? How does AI work with security or cybersecurity? I've learned today, especially, that AI is going to be in everything and anything in every sector for efficiency and different purposes. Help us understand how AI and, and cybersecurity work together. Absolutely. So with AI... Right. This is where an ethics component comes in, where you're seeing there's going to be AI boards that that can help make decisions around what, you know, the technology does. Um, and that's where it comes down to, like, different industries. So in healthcare, right, you certainly don't want to be manipulating people's prescriptions or uh, misdiagnosing people or things of that nature um, are really, really sensitive, um, you know, as well as children, right? So, you know, there's certain things that we have to consider with AI, but really everything is automated. Um, you know, every function of business that you could possibly think of from project management to, um, you know, emails, AI could just talk to AI. So we're in a crazy um, point in history here where we're back to making music, and it, a lot of the creative elements are starting to come back out. So cybersecurity, um, in my mind, has a lot to do with, you know, systems talking to each other, the Internet, transferring of data, um, the protocols. And explain to us what it was maybe without AI and what we're looking at with cybersecurity with AI. So... With AI, um, it's it's making it it's making our jobs easier. It's it really is. So a lot of the mundane tasks that were you know required before, like data entry, um, you know, just just really like like a lot of like stuff with numbers, very just monotonous things, repetitive tasks are fully automated. Um, it's it's really incredible. Um, which is opening up the ability for people to be creative and think outside the box and um, kind of, you know, we're seeing a large uh, swath of innovation and new companies and entrepreneurship popping up right now, which is, which is great. Um, however, I think with the cybersecurity element, it's really just, just making sure that um, people are protected. Um, because a lot of scams are happening. Um, you know, the banks are, I, I have experience working for the largest credit bureau um, in the world, Experian. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, working there, I saw a lot of fraud. I worked with four of the largest um, banks in the United States. Uh, and I saw firsthand how, how, you know, easy it is to manipulate um, 
someone's identity or something of that nature. So really with AI, it's, you know, not doing those things. However, it's working with somebody that you trust, um, you know, to, to handle that information securely um, with a keen eye and is staying up to date and current on all the um, latest trends. So how did you decide to do Astute Technologies? Well, I, I decided to get it launched during um, the peak of the pandemic. I'm actually a Boston guy. Uh, I grew up there my whole life. That's where my family's from. Um, but when everything got shut down, I moved up north uh, to live free or die country. Um, well, I thought it was a little more friendly to maybe launch a business. Um, Do you feel that we are where we should be in cybersecurity in regards to professionalism, staffing, effectiveness, efficiencies, and the systems in place? When I was in the workforce, and this is some time ago, we were falling behind. I'm kind of curious, are we still falling behind? Are we ahead of the game? Where are we specifically on the cybersecurity side? There's a shortage of over five and a half million jobs in cybersecurity right now. And it's ridiculous because when you go to apply for a job in cybersecurity, they ask you for 10 years of experience and it's a new field. Everybody's hacking everybody. And you're, once it goes out into the media, like companies' stock prices fall and it's just ridiculous and the government's really far behind on it and you know when you when you just have the ability to to just hack into anybody's system like you can manipulate information you can change somebody's thought process you can add target them you can you know imagine if it's a foreign nation with unlimited resources just bombarding us bombarding our network with like a ddos attack like which is a denial right, of uh, service. And, um, you know, I I just see it as, like in the movie that recently came out, Leave the World Behind, uh, I didn't really like the ending, but essentially what that is, is it's saying, like, the foreign nation could basically just hack in and shut the taps off for the water. They could shut down the electric grid or cause flooding, because these are really, really old systems, and we need to rebuild them, uh, quite frankly. And if we don't, then we're going to have hundred over 100 million people in major cities panicking, which, you know, that that is probably the biggest threat since, um, I would say, the Cold War. So my platform uh, looks for threats, identifies threats before they happen. Um, I'm actually, I built this technology to look for and identify threats. Yes, there's a human element there, right? And that's the ethics piece. Um, however, yeah, that's my that's my new uh, tool that I've I've developed. It's it's essentially twenty four seven hunting, looking, and stopping and remediating threats from here. And is that the only platform that's doing that now with AI, or are we finding more and more technologies using AI in the cybersecurity space? More and more technologies are are adopting it. However, it's important to note that even a, a major player can be affected by a cyber attack, even if they have adopted it. And you'll see that in the news. So this is where I think it's very important to work with somebody that, that you can trust. So what about small businesses and medium-sized businesses? Are there technologies or softwares or platforms that would be um, beneficial for them to use? Or is that only for the big boys? Is that only for the big IT companies? What about the little guy that's probably listening to us right now? That's who I want to look out for. I'm worried about the SMB space. That's my biggest concern. I want, I think that's where innovation happens. I think that that's how communities are built. And small, medium-sized businesses are the backbone of our country, and they always have been. And we need to focus on how we can keep them protected and not just worry about the giant enterprises that care very little about the economy. So Astute Technologies, would that be a good fit for somebody that's small or medium size? That's my perfect and ideal customer. Okay. That's awesome. That is really, really good to hear. Thank so, you. Nick, I really like the idea of cybersecurity being more progressive, especially here um, in the United States, because I, I personally think um, we are not where we should be and as effective as we should be. 
especially with a lot of the um, possibilities and hacking and everything going on and all the major companies and you start getting into the thousands, you know, the reports, you've heard them just like me. So I do have some concerns about that. And AI being in the picture in cybersecurity, I have not had anyone else on really talk about that. And I do see where that would fit effectively, but I'm concerned in some ways that it could bounce the other way if it's not managed appropriately. Are there any concerns or things that you have seen or heard or wondered about that kept you up at night that you were surprised to run into? My biggest concern is is the youth, the children, like education space, you know, how are they being impacted, you know, by an app like TikTok that really has no filter at all, you know? So like, I, I worry about children. I worry about um, our healthcare, going to the doctor and having, you know, being a public figure or, you know, an executive, like you have the ability to hack into an old computer system and, and adjust something that could potentially um, kill you. Uh, which is very scary. So I think there's a little bit of oversight that needs to step in and say, "Hey, these are sacred places, you know, um, that we that we uh, don't don't mess with." Well, Nick, I think we're going to close. I'm glad that you stopped in pivoting to Web three, and my listeners, we'll see you soon. We're shaping tomorrow together, and thank you for joining us. So welcome. Have a good day, afternoon, and if you're in the morning, have a wonderful day and we'll chat with you soon. Thanks for checking out Pivoting to Web3, Shaping Tomorrow Together. Thank you.